okay? Hello, people of the interwebs. Um, first off, I have to apologize. As you can probably tell, I am not as well put together as I would normally be. That's because I have come down with a stinking cold and just getting dressed this morning was a bit of an effort. <laughs> um, but yeah, I promised a new granola recipe, so here we are. Um, <clears throat> if you've watched the chocolate and coffee granola video, you will know that I did figure out how to uh, edit videos together. So um, I can show you the whole process from start to finish. Uh, the second thing to tell you today is that I am doing a double batch, so it's absolutely huge. Um, I will put the recipe uh, in the description. Um, but yeah, it's basically just double everything. So I've got, uh, instead of four cups of oats, I have eight cups. Um, I've got two cups of nuts, one cup of seeds, three cups of dried fruit, um, <clears throat> and with regard to the date paste, today's flavour is going to be Lady Grey. Um, and if you don't know what that is, uh, it's a flavour of tea, which is made by Twinings. Um, you've obviously heard of Earl Grey, which is uh, black tea with bergamot oil. Um, and Lady Grey, the version of it, is uh, black tea with the bergamot oil, but also with citrus. Um, and I thought that might be quite a nice thing because the coffee worked so well and it wasn't so bitter I thought it would be nice to try a tea based one so for my date paste I have made two cups of dried dates and into that I've put two cups of really strong tea and in this case the only we did have um, we did have Earl Grey in the house this is a tea drinking household um, but I also found uh, this which is from the Tea House Emporium in Bath, I think, um, and this is Ceylon black tea with orange flowers and bergamot oil. Um, it's, it's known as Miss Grey, and you'll also see that I figured out how to flip the thing so it doesn't read you all the labels backwards, which is quite handy. So yeah, so this is Miss Grey from the Tea House Emporium. <coughs> so I made up a really strong pot of that. So there's two cups of that, uh, which I soaked my dates in. Um, and then into that mix, I added uh, like a shot, like a 35ml shot of um, orange blossom water. Um, so yeah, it's it's quite a it's quite a fragrant blend. It's very floral, um, and because the citrus is going to be quite light as a flavour, uh, I'm not going to add any spice into my mix. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Um, obviously I'm going to put in the teaspoon of salt. A really important thing to mention, if you are doubling a recipe, don't double the salt. Um, you still only need one teaspoon. Um, I've made that mistake before and it came out practically unedible, so it's not a good idea. Um, so without further ado, I will point you to my bowl. And you can see here it's almost full. This is going to be really fun. Trying not to throw it all over the uh, throw it all over the counter. Okay, so this is my date paste going in. Um, and the other thing to mention with this particular mix is that because um, Lady Grey traditionally has citrus peel in it, my dried fruit mix I chose one that had candied candied peel, so it's got candied orange peel and candied lemon peel in as well. Um, you can buy it separately, so if you have already raisins and things in the house, uh, you can buy just a tub of, um, a tub of candied citrus peel. Ooh, oh, that's really quite nice. <laughs> Do you know I say that every time and get really surprised, but yeah, no, it is actually delicious. <clears throat> Um, I got asked last week what my uh, nut blend was, because usually I just say I have mixed nuts and mixed fruit. Um, honestly, it really varies depending on what I have in the house. I tend to buy in bulk, um, so I go and I buy lots of nuts, 
all at once and then I just make until I run out. Um, so I did a, I did a, <laughs> a nut run, I did a nut run uh, a few days ago and bought some new ones. So this actually has a huge number of nuts in. It's got um, pecans, walnuts, hazelnuts, brazil nuts, cashews, um, what else have I got in here? Did I say pecans and hazelnuts? Yeah, probably. Okay, so I've got those in there. Um, and for my seed mixes, again, it's exactly the same. It just depends what I've got in the house. Um, so this today, I've got linseeds and um, pumpkin seeds. I've got... <coughs> oh, what else did I put in there? Linseeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds. Um, sometimes I mix cocoa nibs in. depends on the flavour. So last week I had cocoa nibs. Um in with that because obviously it went with the chocolate. I'm sure I put something else in there as well. But I can't for the life of me remember what it is. My brain is not braining today. Um, but yeah, the only thing I would say to you uh, with that is beware if you want to use chia seeds. Um, and I know you see them a lot in um, cereals and granolas and whatever, uh, but just a word of caution, which is that if you're going to eat chia seeds, because of the way they're made, they're really dehydrated and they absorb water at a very quick rate. And because your um, mucosal membranes obviously are quite wet, especially if you're streaming with cold like I am at the moment, um, the chia seeds will soak that up really quickly. And what that means in practical terms is that if you don't soak your chia seeds before you eat them for a few minutes, like five or ten minutes, um, they will stick to the lining of your throat, which is not particularly pleasant and, you know, can occasionally tickle. Um, and if they get stuck there, stuck there, they could cause damage later on. So if you're going to eat chia seeds, make sure you've soaked them first. Um, and in terms of granola, yes, you can put them in and yes, you can bake them in. But if that's what you're going to do, then please soak your granola before you eat it. Um, Oh, that's the other seed I've got in there. I've got hemp seeds. I knew there was another one. Um, with regard to hemp seeds, uh, don't buy the ones with shells on because they are incredibly crunchy and they will get stuck in your teeth and it's not a very pleasant experience. I have made that mistake before. The very first time I bought hemp seeds, I didn't know that you could buy them without the shells on. I didn't actually know that they had shells on. Um, so yeah, that made for a strangely, a strangely crunchy smoothie, I think it was, that I made. Um, so yeah, if you buy hemp seeds, buy them pre-shelled. Um, I think most health food stores have them now because they're really good um, sources of protein and they have quite a nice flavour. So it's definitely worth buying. There is absolutely no um, cannabinoid effect from them at all. They're just I think somebody worked it out once that you'd have to eat like five kilos of them to get stoned, which, no, frankly, nobody's going to do that, and why would you? I mean, my granola is good, but not good enough to eat more than five kilos in one sitting. Okay. I can see this might take a little while. But Unfortunately, this is the biggest bowl that I've got. I think what I might do, now that I'm getting all technically engaged with video production is um, I will shut up and keep stirring and then fast forward through this section.
Okay, so I think that's probably about as mixed as I'm going to get it. It's um, it's a really sticky mix actually. It seems a lot stickier than the coffee for some reason. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure why that is. It might just be the mix of things that I've got in there. Um, so let me just throw this in the sink. Okay, so um, although this is double the mix, I am just going to put it into <clears throat> the same one tray. Um, and that's because, uh, obviously, with it being double the mix, it's going to take twice as long because it has double the liquid in it to evaporate. Um, and all that basically means is that instead of stirring it once in 15 minutes, um, and pressing it down and taking it out in half an hour. I will check it every 15 minutes um, and stir it and then put it back in. I'm expecting that this will probably take about an hour to bake. Um, so, so yeah, I'll probably stir it two or three times before I press it all down, ready for cluster making. Okay. And again, at this stage, we're just toasting, we're not cluster making, so it doesn't, oops, doesn't need to be pressed down quite as firmly as it would if, um, like later on in the, later on in the cooking process. We're just trying to get the oats toasted and the liquid dried out. I want it to be nice and crispy. Um, and again, it could be on a low temperature. Um, I usually do it between 120 and 150. Um, I think I've put it on 150 today, so the oven is preheating. Uh, and again, if um, to line your tray, because obviously this has natural fruit sugars in it, it's made with a uh, it's made with date paste and dates are naturally quite sweet. Um, line your granola tray, your granola pan with either baking paper or greaseproof paper. Either is fine. Um, just basically. And all that's the only reason it's there is just to stop the granola from sticking to the sticking to the pan as the as the sugars caramelise. spread it out into a relatively even layer um, and it's okay to do this in two tins like if you I mean obviously I I bought a specific granola pan because it's something that I make a lot of um, if you don't have a deep-sided granola pan or you have deep-sided pans that is not this big um, just split it into two or into three or however many trays you need to get a fairly even layer um, and just bake it like that and just stir them all like that and it'll be fine still. Um, okay, so this is going to go in the oven. I'm not going to film all of the stirring. Um, I'll keep an eye on it and see how it goes. And then um, the last time I stir it, when I press it all down, I'll come back and video that just so you can see, you know, kind of what colour it is and what it looks like. Okay, so... That is in on the middle shelf of the oven, and I will see you in a bit. Okay, um, it has been probably actually about 50 minutes, it's been five zero minutes since I put um, the granola in the oven. It is finally starting to get all golden and toasty. Um, it's taken quite a long time, uh, obviously because of the volume. Uh, so I'm about to get ready now to take it out and turn it for the last time and press it all down. So this is what it looks like. Um, okay, and it's a little bit manic in our kitchen at the moment because I am currently halfway through cooking dinner. Um, so bear with me just a second. Okay. Um, 
hopefully you can see that on the top, like all of these nuts have gone really golden. They're uh, getting really quite toasty now. Um, and you can see from the fact that it's moving around quite easily that it's not as sticky as it was. So I'm just going to stir all of this up. And just for the record, this is the third time I've stirred it. Um, so obviously I haven't been particularly good about keeping an eye on the time. I should have done it every 15 minutes, so this should have been the fourth time. Or something. I don't know. Um, oops. Granola overboard. Yeah, I decided to try a double batch this time because we've actually been going through it quite quickly. Um, as in, one batch of this has been lasting two of us for a week, so I thought if I did a double batch then I wouldn't have to do any next weekend. Which would be nice because I have a lot of work on, so we shall see. Okay, so um, the reason that I was showing you this is because this is when we now press it all down to make clusters. Um, so spread it into an even layer and then squash. Squash, 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 squash. And this actually smells lovely. It's not quite this um fragrant as the coffee and chocolate one was, for obvious reasons, they're much more delicate flavours, but actually you can really smell the orange blossom in there, it's lovely. I mean, it's not overwhelmingly floral, but it is quite nice. Okay, so, you can see that I've pushed it all down as far as I can, and it's actually now level with the surface of the pan, which it wasn't before. So I am now going to put this back in the oven. And I'm going to leave that for 15 minutes um, and then I will take it out and I will put it aside, uh, cover it with a tea towel and leave it until it's at room temperature. Um, so I won't film myself taking it out of the oven because frankly it's not very interesting but I will come back to you when it's cool and ready to eat. Okay, bye. Okay, so we're back. This is now uh, completely cool down to room temperature. Um, so it is time for the moment of truth to see whether or not it's made nice clusters or not. Um, it actually looks like it has. We've got some nice, nice clumps here. Um, let's see, it's got a really nice golden colour as well. Um, mm. Flavour-wise, it's really nice. You can taste the. Um, orange blossom but not so much the tea it's um it's a very delicate and quite subtle flavor but actually weirdly not quite as sweet as the coffee one and i'm not sure why that is it's got exactly the same amount of dates in um hmm maybe it's the chocolate that makes a difference uh, but no that's definitely very nice it's going to be delicious with milk okay now, because this is um, this is a double batch, it's going to go absolutely everywhere. I think I might turn. do it by hand. Yeah, look at these clusters; they're amazing. And that's just the date paste. There's no um, there's no syrup in this at all. It's just all grouped together with the uh, stickiness of the fruit, which is great.
just hope I'm going to be able to fit it all in this tub. Um, there we go. It's better I should be able to get the paper out now. Not sure if I'm going to fit all of this in. Huh. Well, there you are. double recipe has actually perfectly filled a cereal canister. So just for concept of volume, that's how much it does. Um, so yeah, an interesting one. I think I maybe have a think about how to make the tea flavour slightly stronger. Um, either use a different tea, because that one, although it was a although it was a black tea, when you made it, it's not like a, a really, really dark dark tea so it might be worth doing it with a with a blended tea perhaps hmm, something to try in future okay well thanks for watching guys um if you've got any questions put them in the comments um otherwise i will speak to you next time